Hey guys and welcome to another reaction video. Yeah, today I'm continuing with the Taking Ponies to Series uh, videos by the Fiery Joker. Uh, this time, Equestria Games and Chrysalis Invasion. Uh, okay, Equestria Games. <laughs> Aside from that incredibly cringy part where Spike has to improvise a anthem for Cloudsdale. I never listen to because it's moments like these where I just take my headphones off like even the first time when I just took them off and said no I'm, I'm I'm not doing this to me I'm not a guy who is incredibly fond of cringy stuff I know there are people that really laugh at cringe humor sometimes I do too but most of the times cringe cringy stuff just I don't want I don't want it I'm not saying that the show should stop making cringy stuff from time to time. I think it's okay that they do that. And like I said, some people really think it's funny and so it's okay. But don't expect me to like it too much. It could happen. There are some things that I like. But some things I don't like. Other than that, I think it was a fairly solid episode. Um, it was interesting to see that there are ways to like for me it was interesting to see that there are ways to suppress unicorn magic because you know they did that to prevent cheating which i think was actually quite a good and interesting idea um and i think it makes sense that you wouldn't uh make that with the princesses that you wouldn't put twilight to that because you know they're royalty and you kind of trust them so it was Incredibly unfortunate that Spike thought he could actually ignite the fire with his eyes, with his mind. Uh, that was so stupid. But I thought it was funny. And in fact, um, there is one thing I do remember. I remember way before I actually started watching the show, I remember watching a reaction video to this episode. I'm not entirely sure if I watched the whole thing. Uh, but in case you don't know, MLP was one of the reasons why I started uh, watching a lot more English YouTube videos. Uh, before that, I only watched them very few, which was the reason that was like in 2014, my English was not so good back then. Not bad for a, for a guy, for a German uh, going into 8th grade at the time. It, yeah, it must have been 8th grade. Um... Uh, we have English in school, of course, but they only teach you that much. Uh, they only, within 10 years, and I back that, no, you get English, or I got English from first time in third grade. So it's in total seven years uh, for some six and for others 10. Yeah, 10. Uh, but at the time I've only been through yeah, six years. Yeah, six years. I'm not the fastest at calculating in my head. I've only had English for only for six years, uh, a couple of times a week. It teaches you the basics. Uh, not no more than the basics, much more than the basics. But what they try to do in German schools is to bring you to a point where you would survive living in an English-speaking country. Of course, you would over time learn automatically. But the first couple of weeks where you just don't have the opportunity to learn so much you're supposed to survive with the knowledge that they can give you that's what they do that's what they can do and i wasn't the greatest in english like i had average grades at best back then so there was a lot that i didn't understand uh, so i wasn't didn't really get spoiled all that much but i remember one scene that i remember to this day is um I'm not entirely sure how they come, like, you know, Twilight came to the rest of the main six and said, yo, I had to help Spike because I just couldn't watch him fail like that. Though, you know, and then Spike came and she was kind of act, act cool. Like, now, that's not what she said, but, no. and then Rainbow Dash just took out her, her, sun, her sunglasses, made this exact pose and was like, so I remember laughing at that part so hard. I thought it was so incredibly funny. I understood that part only by context. <laughs> only due to context clues I understood what Twilight said. Um, I thought it was so hilarious. I thought I to this moment to this day I remember that how how great that moment was for me personally. <laughs> it was a great moment. So 
But I've been, wow, I don't, oh god, I've been talking for five minutes. There's still another video I have to talk about, shit. Um, yeah, overall, I think it was a good episode. And the second one. Sorry, I have to kind of talk about it. Yeah, the second one, uh, Chrysalis Invasion. It's not, it doesn't say Candle of Wedding, so I'm assuming he's really only talking about the invasion itself. Like, he's... You're not talking about the episode, but only over a topic in the episode. Crystal's invasion plan was crap. Was crap. Was crap in my, uh, in my opinion. It was a fairly bad plan, and if you ask me, she only made it as far as she did by pure luck. Uh, I'm not going to take another five minutes to explain why, so I'm just going to start it right now. Maybe he has this very same idea. If he just thinks it was good, then he probably wouldn't have made an entire video about it. So I'm assuming that he has at least some points to criticize. So let's get, just get started already. Six fucking minutes. Three, two, one, click. Watch the first six minutes of this. <clears throat> uh, the again, Equestria I Games. Wow, there shit. was a lot of build up to this event. A lot there of was. build up to a spike episode. Yeah. Huh. I've been seeing a lot of complaints that this episode was wasted potential to show off the events of the games for another Spike episode. Okay, to all the detractors, let me ask you a question. What were you expecting? Lightning Dust or Gilda to make a return? That would have been literary suicide, showing off the actual games? Okay, ignoring that we actually got that stuff, this is a show about relationships and characters, not fueling some fans' head cannons. Yes, the lore of the world is interesting, but that's not the main reason why this show is so great. I'll take an episode of great character development over fleshing out a world any day, and here, that happened. So this starts off with I the guess, Pony yeah. Billions on the train and Rainbow Dash gives a pep talk. I like this speech because it shows how Rainbow Dash has matured as a character, showing that winning to her isn't everything as long as you keep your friendships, but winning is still important to her. Yeah. And this got across really well, and funny I should add. So apparently Spike is hailed as a savior that of a much. whole empire. Yeah. So that part wait, I do remember. Spike is hounded by fans for saving the equivalent of a city-state, and the main six are completely ignored for saving Equestria several times? Yep. Maybe the Crystal Empire just has a higher respect for heroes. Maybe. I like these guys. Yeah. <laughs> so then Spike is given the honor of lighting the torch and Fails. he freaks out. Yeah. Okay, time to get on my soapbox. I've heard some complaints that Spike has never shown he's had stage fright. In well, fact, we've seen him perform several times without a problem. Well, even though those observations are correct, I still think it's totally believable because that's what happened to me. As a kid, I was in band, theater, and sports, and I really didn't have a problem with stage fright. Same. In fact, I laughed at other people who had stage fright. Okay. And I'm not saying I was right bad. to do so, no. but you get my meaning. Then again, the reason I was comfortable performing was probably because I was just a kid, and my crowds consisted of at most a hundred. Now that I'm a Marine Corps musician, and people actually consider me a hero now, my crowds have consisted of about 30 or 40,000. Yeah, temporarily forgetting a line in the importance of being earnest to a few families is a little less nerve-wracking than temporarily forgetting Stop. a moment in the Yankee Stadium or the Mercedes-Benz Superdome. Yeah, being thought of as a hero is great, but it also puts a ton of pressure on you because you're expected to represent. And with pressure comes higher potential to make mistakes you wouldn't normally make, which is totally believable here. Stage fright happens to the best of us. Sure, we get pep talks and months of preparation for our big performances, but once you actually get to the Veterans Festival and you realize the spotlight put on you, it dawns on you where you are. The thousands of people that showed up there consider you a hero, a representative. You see the face of that veteran in a wheelchair as his service song is playing, and the effort he goes through to try and stand up and deliver a salute. You I will guess. get nervous. You want to be perfect. You have to be perfect. Otherwise, you feel like you let people down. You want to give them what you feel they deserve. Perfection. And when you make the tiniest screw up, you feel like you failed and it's hard to let it go. And this being shown here is pretty cathartic and relatable, at least to me. So Twilight, in an effort to save Spike, lights the fire herself. And Spike is convinced he can light fires with his mind. Uh... Well, I've heard weirder logical leaps, and yeah, I, I thought guess. it was funny too. Yeah. <laughs> At this point, I was thinking, please don't, oh, please don't make this into another too nice to tell the truth makes someone do something they can't really do plot. But thank heavens it didn't. Yeah. Twilight tells the truth and crushes Spike's spirits. Yeah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> well, better they nip that in the bud before it got out of hand later. Yeah. So, security fields. They're an interesting concept. This also lends credence to the theory that spells can be placed for an effect, the technical term being ward spells or trap spells. So the race is on and Rainbow didn't win. 
I think this is a great development for Rainbow Dash's character. She gets to participate in the pony version of the Olympics, but she does so knowing she's not going to win first prize. She's just happy to compete for millions of people and represent. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez, Rainbow, that's pretty cool of you. Yeah. Then Spike asks Harsh Rennie about contributing something else to the games. As far as that goes, I relate to this too, as I'm also one of those people that feels the need to amend mistakes right after I make them. It's hard for me to accept failure, I'll admit it. So Spike tries to make himself out to be a hero and tries to sing the Cloudsdale National Anthem. So, wait, cities have national anthems? Yeah, that's How does weird. does that work? I know our cultures are different, but that still seems odd for a song normally meant to inspire allegiance and loyalty to a country, and something of cultural significance on a state level is being used for a city. So he bombs the song Maybe it's a... Oh, heavens, sort of city. the cringe. Yeah. I actually turned off the TV. I was so mortified. I'll give Mr. Polsky some props for incorporating scandals as a concept into the episode, but... Amazing grace! It's like watching a stage slowly conflagrate! But I don't think this moment was unwarranted. I didn't turn the TV off because it was bad. I turned the TV off because I felt so bad for Spike and I didn't want to see him fail like that. I felt like turning the TV off would preserve some of his dignity, I don't know. Then Spike tries to pack up and leave. I totally relate. Once yeah. you embarrass yourself, even if no one noticed, you feel like you just want to curl up and fade into oblivion because, well, you noticed. Yeah. It may not be a big deal to others, but it's a big deal to yourself. Sometimes you are your own worst critic. Then the ice archery, which, as an aside, I kind of question how this event is judged. One of the archers fumbles and creates a giant ice cloud of death. So, this hasn't happened before? I guess? Okay, I'll take it. <laughs> What's actually a little more believable is the security guard's reaction time. Hey, unpredictable emergencies happen, and sometimes they're not easily fixed before it's too late. I'm pretty sure that after this whole debacle, there's going to be some change to the security next time, like clearing the skies before the event or something. Probably. Hey, that's how it happens in real life. A lot of rules exist because something unprecedented happened. That's yeah, right. that's I mean, just look at like air awesome travel. By destroying the ice cloud. Yes, Polsky. You are Aviation, awesome! I think it's then called. Spike completely shuts Earth it off. Travel, I don't know. As I said before, a lot of times your harshest critic is yourself, and whenever you actually do something good, you just think of it as, what? I was only doing what I was supposed to do. No big deal. Yeah. You're more than happy I'm to I'm reading or rereading a fanfic where a guy is doing that constantly. You things you just had to do. It gets it a little frustrating over time because he was doing some really great stuff. Nothing special. Things, That's why I like really this moral so things, much. Just, Learning to let stuff go and ultimately... No, take some credit, you asshole. Something I still struggle with. Take my credit! To see a character like Spike well, able to learn this me. lesson gives me hope Whatever. that one day I can do the same sense. and stop taking things so seriously. Nah, never. John Williams made that? That's cool. Okay, that was that, and now to the chrysalis thing. Chrysalis assist invasion plan. Shut up! Chrysalis assist invasion plan. Three, two, one, click. I like the intro. It was still a great episode, though. A canterlot wedding. Boy, is this a divisive episode. Mainly due to the complexity of the plot. A lot of people say that Chrysalis's plan to take over Equestria was stupid and only almost worked through sheer dumb luck. Yeah. But here's the thing. The plan worked. And I think it worked for very logical reasons that paints Chrysalis as quite the tactical genius. Yes, uh, okay. I'm putting forth the notion that Chrysalis's plan is actually brilliant. Here, let me explain what I mean. Easily the most common complaint against Chrysalis was, why did she act out of character? If she really was a changeling, she would have to act exactly like her target to avoid suspicion. Why did kind Chrysalis of, but that is not nice my biggest complaint. Friends? This makes it look like Chrysalis didn't do the recon on the person she was impersonating. Kind of, yeah. This seems very careless and like a critical research failure. On the surface, in the magical land of Equestria, there's a little thing called the Elements of Harmony, which are a convenient fix-all-the-things weapon utilized by our little ponies. Quite the obstacle in taking over a country. How does one remove that as a threat? Well, let's think about this. I think Chrysalis knew about the elements of Harmony, because, probably. you know, Eternal Night, Chaos across Equestria, that's probably gonna turn some heads. And there's the fact that during the climax, Chrysalis ordered a small unit to distract the main six while a noticeably larger number of troops secured the actual elements. It shows that Chrysalis knew the elements were a threat and acted accordingly, much like a tactician would. 
Then again, if Chrysalis knew about the elements, then she would know they need all six elements in order to get them to work, so getting rid of one bearer renders them all useless. This leads me to thinking that Chrysalis intentionally tried to villainize Twilight in order to separate her from her friends to render the elements useless. Notice how Chrysalis only acted out of character when Twilight was present, so only Twilight would point it out. Notice how everything Chrysalis did as Cadence would only be out of character to someone who knew her. Notice how she had the perfect excuse of wedding stress and a busy husband to fall back on in case someone decided to call her out. Notice how Chrysalis kept trying to get on Twilight's friend's good side while making Twilight look overly suspicious and possessive. This way, if Twilight ever found out about her secret, none of them would believe her. Maybe Chrysalis did do the research on her friends and acted in ways that perfectly manipulated them against Twilight. Notice the way she acted and worded things would sound mean to Twilight, but not to her friends, who don't know Cadence and chalk up bad behavior to stress. This is a gambit only a master manipulator, like a changeling, could pull off intentionally. There's also doing the mind control on Shining Armor with Twilight in the other room. Some would see that as stupidly risky. But no, I don't have. I have no problem with that. Twilight to see that and jump to the conclusion it was evil, just to have ammo against her when Shining Armor defended Cadence, and when everyone abandoned Twilight, she would be free to do with Twilight as she wished. Yeah, I can no see that. No one would think to look for Twilight because she was banned from the wedding, and they feel she should serve her punishment. And honestly, they were happy to be a part of the wedding. Another obstacle to usurpation that Chrysalis surpassed was Shining Armor and his Shield spell, which could conveniently block all threats out of Canterlot. This is a yeah. spell that neither Celestia or Luna And can why accomplish. was that shield up again? That? Oh, how about impersonating his fiance and sucking all of his energy away? Keep your enemies close after all. This would also explain why Chrysalis didn't impersonate Celestia or Luna because they weren't the biggest threat that needed to be neutralized. One big thing that people associate as a tactical blunder on Chrysalis' part is Chrysalis revealing herself and monologuing like a James Bond villain. I think she was just buying time. Her minions were chipping away at the shield. I can see I that. Yeah, I can see that. The ponies with their exposition dump long enough for the shield to crack because, you know, Celestia is in the room and it would be easier to take her on with an army. She didn't need to in the end, to her surprise, yeah, but you get yeah, my meaning. Yeah, yeah. Some people seem to think that Cadence's taunting of Twilight was unnecessary and only served to eventually help the two prisoners escape. While that is true, if you look at it a different way, if Chrysalis is a tactical genius, then this can take a pretty dark turn. Notice how her taunting caused Twilight to attack the real Cadence out of rage. Okay, what yeah, I, I think I can see. was intentional. I, I can see. What if Chrysalis yeah, yeah. intentionally sent Twilight down there to hurt and maybe kill Cadence? That way, if Twilight did manage to escape, she would have to go through more ponies. And after offing Cadence, offing three more ponies wouldn't be too hard. And if she came back, she would realize that she had killed the real Cadence and would probably become distraught and broken. Yeah. And resist the invasion due to her despair. I think possibly you're overthinking suicide. it a little bit Forever now. The elements of harmony useless and giving Chrysalis free reign to enslave Equestria under a parasitical tyranny! Oh, sweet Celestia, what is wrong with <laughs> In all seriousness, maybe Chrysalis wasn't going that far. Maybe she was just toying with her prey. After all, she did set up guards outside in case they managed to escape, so that shows she figured they might make it out. This does certainly seem fitting of the manipulative persona they were trying to build for Chrysalis, if a little disturbing. Even though most of this is theory, it is reinforced with the fact that Chrysalis would be a tactical genius because it's been shown. Early on, Chrysalis had a contingency plan in case Twilight and Cadence actually escaped the prison. Obviously, three unicorns might not do well against the element of magic and the princess of love, but think about Chrysalis as a manipulator here. These ponies are brainwashed. Would they be willing to fight and beat up innocent ponies to escape? It's a great plan, but it ultimately failed because... <laughs> yes! Yes! <laughs> the plot demanded it. Seriously, how could a Chrysalis predict that? I'm recording! Yes, Chrysalis' plan there's ultimately failed door. because of Deus Ex Machina, and there's not much you can do against that. Though I gotta say, it kind of speaks to the skill of the writer when they create a villain plan so perfect that they write so. themselves into a corner and are forced to deus ex machina themselves yeah, out. The door. If you look at it this way, That's Chrysalis' plan really was cool. pretty much perfect. Chrysalis played her cards expertly, taking care of her biggest threats from most to least. While others may see a fool, I see a genius who did her research, expertly manipulated ponies against each other, including Twilight and her friends. No, my nephew's there. It's not your fault. She fooled every pony. Mm, I did, didn't I? Maybe we're not giving Chrysalis enough credit. Maybe if we think about this the way the writers intended for us to see, we'll see some actual brilliance. Or maybe I'm just taking this too seriously. Probably.
I am not convinced. I still think the plan wasn't really good. Okay. Uh, for the first one, Equestria Games. I don't have a lot to say to this one. I pretty much agree with everything he said. <laughs> there wasn't a lot. There wasn't a lot that I did didn't agree with. Actually, yeah, I could pretty much see all of his points, and still think it's a pretty good episode. To the second one, let's just jump jump straight to it. I still think Candlelight Wedding is a great two-parter in the great season. It was a finale, right? What's the season two finale, right? Or was it the season three? No, it was a season two finale. I'm pretty sure. Great two episodes. Great finale. Uh, I'm not convinced. Not at all. Uh, first of all, the shield. Um, the only reason why that shield was up because Chrysalis herself threatened to attack Cantalot. If she wouldn't have done that, if she would have just shut up. But master here. Sorry about that. Uh, if she would have just not threatened Candelot, and I really don't see a reason why she did, she the shield would never have been a problem. Even if she wanted to attack at the perfect moment and wanted to. Even if she wanted to attack at the perfect moment, when they all were in the chamber, if they didn't notice the changelings... Yeah, look, okay. He wants to have... I don't know why he wants to come to me. I will go to him in a minute. <laughs> okay. Don't break my door. <laughs> Jesus, this episode is all over the place. I might have to cut. Um, yeah, like, uh, she could have just... If they didn't notice the changelings right on top of this shield, then there I see no reason why they couldn't have just, I don't know, hit the army on the other side of the mountain or something? That then it would have required a signal, but that can't be too hard to figure out to somehow give them a signal. Uh, so the shield, I see no reason why she needed the shield. It she seemed really inconvenient to her, but she was the only reason why that shield was there. Second, what he said about the elements of harmony, driving them apart, I can see that. But even though they represent the elements of harmony, they still needed the actual gems, which they left in Ponyville, I think. But even if they didn't, uh, they tried to get them uh, in the episode and were stopped by the army. No, they didn't let them put it. They tried to, uh, to get to them and were stopped by the army. It might have been luck that they were stopped by the army, at least for long enough. But I, okay, I see no reason why she would think she had to drive them apart. Why she? She would think her army couldn't get, take up with them. But even if she had actually planned uh, to trap Twilight from the very beginning, there were other ways to do that. She could have just stayed in character, said, Twilight, can I talk to you for a minute, lure her away from her friend's trapper, and said, yeah, I talked to her for a couple of minutes, everything is all right, and then she went, I have no fucking idea where she is, stop bothering me, I'm trying to plan my fucking wedding. Even if they're best friends, she... It would be understandable that, as a bride, she had other things on her mind and couldn't look for every single one of her friends. She could have said, okay, I have to do shit right now, but if I see you, I will point her your way. Nobody would have expected anything. It seemed much more logical to me. I mean... Um, and there was one more thing. No, I think there was everything. But that, the second one is actually the smaller complaint for me, if you, uh, if you ask me. That shield was kind of stupid. I mean, she could have mined, she couldn't, she... Obviously she somehow managed to trap Cadence alone. She managed to get Shining Armor under her spell. Why get on the bad side of Twilight? You could have trapped her in a much different way. I mean... 
I don't know. I still think it's a horrible plan. I still think it's a bad plan. Still a great episode, though. Still a great episode. But bad plan. <laughs> it's any everything I have to say that to this anyway, so I'm just gonna end the video right here. Okay. Yeah, I'm in the eye. This episode is all over the place. I'm just gonna end the video right here, so I hope you guys like this little commentary. And I'll see you next time. Bye.